Hi, my name's Peter Hitchman. I work for Chris Jolly Outdoors as their survival hike guide and their snowshoeing guide. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about snowshoeing and survival hikes. So a little bit about myself. I got into the outdoors in an unusual way. I used to work as a personal protection bodyguard for Duran Duran, Roxy Music and Sade. I uh, started my career in that field as a 17 year old, working alongside two ex-British SAS soldiers. And our way of de-stressing would have been going into the mountains for a hike, play survival games, into the local national parks. If you're in the city, which of course you nine times out of ten you are, it would be people's back gardens, it would be local parks, it would be urban environments. And that's me. So some of the things you may learn, I'll give you a couple of little tricks. This is called the fire steel. This burns at 5,000 degrees Celsius. It can work in the wind, the rain and high altitude, whereas cigarette lighters don't. So you can make fire very easily. Uh, another little, little trick is we often have our head torch and we often have, especially in New Zealand, power cuts. Now, if you take an empty two liter, or in this case, one and a half liter milk bottle, you take your torch, you put your torch against the bottle and there you have a lamp. Instead of a torch, you have a lamp. And this will, two or three of these around your room will give you your lighting, as simple as that. So one of the questions I'm often asked on survival walks is, can you learn how to survive in the wild on a half day walk? Well, the simple answer is no. I can give you a few tips and tricks and it's up to you to take them away and, and practice them, learn them. Uh, it's better to have three or four good skills under your belt than try and get 10,000. Let's head on to snowshoeing. One of the questions asked is, what is the difference between snowshoeing and a regular walk? Well, it's quite easy. Snowshoeing, you have a larger shoe which you place your foot with inside and this shoe displaces the weight across the snow, allowing you access to uh, an untouched wilderness, a winter wonderland where nobody else can get to. A quirky little question I was asked here was, what is the weirdest thing you've eaten on a survival walk or a survival situation? That's quite easy. The weirdest one is always the first one. And the first one for me was fishing with my father and his way of keeping the maggots warm before he puts them on the hook to go fishing was to put them underneath my tongue and I had to keep them warm. If he slapped me on the back, which he thought was highly hilarious, I ended up swallowing them. So I don't think the love was really there somehow. Thank you for listening to my little spiel on snowshoeing and survival walks. We hope to see you out on the tracks real soon. For more information, just head to our website at Chris Jolly Outdoors. Thank you.